Let all God's people say, Amen. Amen. If you're glad to be in the house of God this morning, somebody might put their hands together. I'm Jay Williams, lead pastor of Union Church. Our building is here in the south end of Boston, but wherever you are, sanctuary is, the 70 or so or more people who are gathered online from home as you travel, we're excited because sanctuary is where you are. Pastor Kyle, our associate pastor, is in Texas. Uh, this morning, he uh, was participating in a wedding of a good friend, so he and his fiance Angie are there, and uh, on Tuesday, he'll have his ordination interview, so we'll bless him later on in service on today, indeed. Uh, we welcome you to Union. A union is a vibrant and growing faith community where hope lo lives, the love of God is experienced, Christ is encountered, the Holy Spirit indwells. If it's your first time here, we say welcome. If it's your first time here in a long time, we say welcome. If you come here every week, we say welcome to all welcome home. This is a place uh, where we seek uh, to be family with one another as we gather around table to sing, to celebrate, and to know that God is with us as we travel this journey. We invite you to go to unionboston.org forward slash online. You can download a copy of the bulletin. You can also fill out a connect card if you are looking for a church home, uh, looking and wondering about this faith community and want to set up a meeting with uh, myself or Pastor Kyle. Uh, you send out the uh, connect card. One of us will be in touch with you. Finally, you can also, uh, if you are in building with me right now, you can connect to the chat, uh, the, just go ahead and go to our app, connect to Zoom, just don't connect audio, and then you can engage uh, with the chat which we see on the screen because indeed a sermon is preached here and a sermon is preached here as we uh, talk with one another and engage these scriptures uh, uh, as we travel along this journey during the season of Lent. As we gather and before our praise team guides us in song on today, uh, we would be remiss uh, if we did not note uh, the passing of two of our beloveds. Um, first, Nancy Pleasant, uh, who passed recently, and also uh, the Reverend Walter Barton, uh, who passed on last Sunday. Uh, Walter was a member of the New York Annual Conference, clergy person, but would always uh, visit here because his mother lived here before she transitioned. We'll host his homegoing celebration later in March uh, as we coordinate with the family, but we lift up the families of Nancy and of Walter and those who mourn and grieve this day. So on this day, we gather knowing that prayer changes things and that God hears our prayers and responds and meets us at the place of our deepest need. Uh, so if you are standing in need of prayer, go ahead and just type it in the chat during this service. Uh, we will lift them as we continue to press our way in. It's the last Sunday of Black History and Futures Month, but this is to say every Sunday is, uh, every day is Black History and Futures Month uh, at Union. Put your hands together. Last Sunday of February, first Sunday of Lent. So these things meet and shape the service on this day. That's enough. All right, let's, let's sing. Stand on your feet. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Good morning, church. How you doing today? We come to worship together. We're going to need your help today. It's me and Angela and you. I'm so glad. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Satan had me 
joy of the Lord truly is our strength this morning. Does anybody believe that the joy of the Lord is your strength? Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And in this season of Lent, there is beauty in your brokenness.
I've never been so free, caught in your love for me. I've never been more secure, knowing your heart. I've never been so free, caught in your love for me. I've never been more secure, knowing your heart. I've never been so free, caught in your love for me. I've never been more secure, knowing you're. You give me joy down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul. You give me joy down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul. if someone, perhaps someone who's logged in to the chat might just type that simple three-letter word, joy. And maybe there's somebody in the building today that knows joy. Just give God a wave offering. As we turn to God in prayer, maybe joy is not your portion this morning. Maybe you come with heaviness of heart, of pain, of mourning. It's morning. The psalmist says that joy comes in the morning, even when the night has been long and there has been much pain. So we stand on your promise, giving thanksgiving today that, yes, there is beauty in our brokenness. God can turn and change the ashes of death and destruction into the creative dust of creation. So we give you thanks this morning. We give you thanks this morning. Yes, we give you thanks this morning because you are a good God and your mercy endureth forever. 
from the very rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Though as we gather in this place today, already you are present. So dwell a little bit more in tabernacle with us so that we might see you and experience your love in the circle of your grace. Heal the brokenhearted. Rescue those who are lost. And inspire us all with the fresh anointing of your Holy Spirit. So that when we leave this place, oh God, we will no longer be the same. So we pray these and more blessings in the matchless name of Jesus, who is the Christ. It's in his name we pray. Let all God's people say amen. 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 amen and amen. Somebody put their hands together. How good it is uh, to be in the house of God. Uh, just bless God once more for our praise team. Too strong of the seal singing to the glory of God on this morning. We give thanks to you, Angela, and to Robert. And it is good to have our, our drummer back from Italy. He was home in Italy. So, Fabio, we're glad that you are here. Our, our percussionist, it's, it's, it's good to have. Uh, we had some good friends uh, in, in Dor and in uh, Guillermo. Guillermo, yes, uh, but it's good uh, that you are back home uh, with us, Fabio, indeed. So, beloved, uh, why don't we bless God for the reading of the scripture as we turn and listen to what God has for us as we journey on this season of Lent. So welcome Gary Bailey, our church council chair. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor and said to him, all these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him and suddenly angels came and waited on him. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Thanks be to God.
I said I found a friend who is all to me. His love, his love, his love, his love, his love is ever true to me, to me, to me.
don't you know that you know that you know that you know that you know how good it is to be saved. And, and Tammy, you already got the, 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 you got ahead of it. Go ahead, somebody type in the, the chat that life now is sweet. Jan Richardson is correct that as we enter into the wilderness, we can't promise that this road will be free of danger and fear. It won't be free from scorching of sun or hunger or thirst. But we can tell you this, even in the midst of all of that, life now is sweet. And we can rest assured knowing that as we go, God goes with us. That yes, we are saved. Which is just a churchy way of saying that God loves us. And we know that we are loved by God. And because we know that we are loved by a God who loved us, we're free. And we get to live freely, joyfully, abundantly. So even in the midst of a sometimes bitter life, we can say life now is sweet. Yeah, Tanya, you're right. Nobody told us that the road would be easy. But God has brought us too far to leave us. So God is with us and goes in front of us and walks alongside of us and holds us when we fall back and want to turn around. Emmanuel, God with us. As we begin this Lenten journey, here is the core takeaway. The wilderness is not a place of temptation, but of rest. Sure, the 40-day journey of Lent has been modeled off of the Gospel of Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. We heard it beautifully read, then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. It says he fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. Yes, that's in the text. And Jesus came to save us. And because Jesus saved us, there's some things that Jesus did that we don't have to do. Right, that, that's, that's the point. <laughs> that Jesus did some things on our behalf that changes our experience of this life so that we, right, Jesus went to the cross so we don't have to. They said Jesus paid it all so that we might have access to the tree of life and proclaim that life now is sweet. So while I appreciate Right, the tradition, I, we wrestle with the tradition, the tradition, and, and we struggle with it, and we, we try to make sense and make meaning of it, even as we live in the present day. So, so yes, Jesus went into the wilderness and fasted and was famished for 40 days and was tempted by 
the devil, by the tempter, and, somebody say and. and. There's always another way to look at the story. <laughs> Right, but, but we, let me just make clear, from the, if, if the approach of the wilderness as a time of famine and being famished, if that approach works for you, then good. Right, there's no fret, no worries, no condemnation in Christ Jesus, our Lord. If that approach works for you, good, but I'm just going to be honest with you, it no longer works for me. You see, Lent has uh, too often and for so many become a a time, a site of pain and flogging and self-flagellation. Sure, I know what they say, that no pain, no gain, and, and maybe that's true, but in a world that literally knocks us down and beats us up this year, I need a different approach to this sacred season called Lent. I'm looking for a creative journey that has more to do with creation than destruction. This year in the desert, I'm more concerned with desire rather than denial. Here's why, right? right th- we've been on a journey already. For the last couple of weeks, we spent time studying Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus taught us that we are salt and light, right? The Message Bible said it this way. Let me tell you why you are here. You're here to be the salt seasoning and to bring out the God flavors of the earth. And if you lose your saltiness, then how will people taste godliness? So if we are salt, then during this desert season, rather than denial, I'm interested in in what salt does and helps to make something delicious, right? In pursuit of our destiny and service to the God who always gives us the desires of our hearts, right? Right. So so, so, so maybe you don't like the, the, the salty. Well, maybe you focus on the deliciousness of that which is sweet, right? So instead of giving up something, we're taking up something, we're, we're, we're leaning into a new approach that turns the story as we seek to be saved and to turn our lives around. So this Lent, I'm keen on the creative journey that reimagines, that reimagines the sacred season and our cherished traditions in a way that brings the story to life. At the start of the journey, we're making a turn still in the wilderness, but taking a different approach to it. You see, there's always alternatives if you know where you're going. But as they say, if you don't know where you're going, any road will do. And while you're traveling on any old road, you might discover if you just haphazardly just choose the road because any road will do, you might discover along the way that there's roadblocks and pitfalls and all types of twists and turns if you don't know where you're going and choose the road that you take with intention. Lent is about intentionality and deliberateness and choice. So the wilderness path that I choose is this. The wilderness is not a place of temptation, but of rest. Let's listen to another articulation of what happens in the wilderness that helps us to focus instead of on temptation and pain and self-flagellation, Mark in chapter 6, verse 30, talks about the wilderness in this way. I invite you just to close your eyes and to hear these words. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, come away to a deserted place 
all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going. They had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Hear those words again, this time from the New Living Translation. The apostles returned to Jesus from their ministry tour and told them about all the things they had done and taught. Then Jesus said, let us go off by ourselves to the desert, to a quiet place and rest a while. He said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his apostles did not even have time to eat. So they left by boat for a quiet place. And then in the tradition of Lectio Divina, here for a third time. This time from the message. The apostles then rendezvoused with Jesus and reported on all that they had done and taught. And Jesus said, come off by yourselves. Let's take a break and get a little rest. For there was so much constant coming and going that they did not even have time to eat. So they got in the boat and went off to a remote place, to the desert, to the wilderness, by themselves. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. So here's the first and perhaps the main point of it all. Jesus invites us leads us into the wilderness not to tempt us or to put us to the test to see if we're going to pass a test as if life is some cosmic test where we are trying to earn some cosmic reward. Jesus is not trying to test us. Jesus says to his disciples, to his friends, come follow me to the wilderness desert. You're exhausted. And it makes a lot of sense. We've been doing good work. And this good work has been a blessing to you and to others. Right? And that's the thing about the creative journey when we're doing good things about creation. God did amazing good things in those first six days. And on the seventh day, God rested and took Sabbath and did nothing, no thing. You see, rest is a hard thing. Rest is a hard thing to do. Rest is a hard thing to do. <laughs> Maybe that's part of the problem, right? We actually really don't even have the proper language because rest is not about doing at all. Rest is about being. Resting assured is about being confident of who you are and whose you are, a child of the Most High God. You know, that's what we're talking about when we sing about being saved. As, as we remember this anchor scripture for us during this year of creativity, that God created us as God's works of art. Beautiful and blessed, just as we are. So less about the doing and more about the being. 
to be who God created us to be. Simply beloved. To rest assured. And to stand on that firm foundation with confidence that we are loved. Created in love to be loved. So beloved, be loved. And be love for one another. That's the gift, the invitation for this season. Student Minister Solomon's meditation in today's devotional email speaks to this promise. If you haven't already signed up, sign up. UnionBoston.org for slash Lent. You get it in your inbox to help remind us, right? Because that's the point, right? Life is hard and bitter, and we need to be reminded of its sweetness. Right, the world tries to attack us and to hurt us and to harm us and to destroy us. So every now and again, you just need to be reminded of how loved and beautiful you are. He, he writes this way, that time and seasons have proven that our God is a wondrous God. It is in the nature of God to perform wonders. Not only does God do wonders, God has made us humans to be wonders to the whole of creation. David walked and lived in it and testified that I am beautifully, fearfully, and wonderfully made. Minister Solomon invites us. I invite you to take a moment right now and feel, feel your body, your whole body from head to toe and feel the wonders of God. Yes, you, each of you, you're wonderfully made. Rest assured and stand on that promise that it is our nature to be glorious and to be lovely. You see, we're always moving, always walking, always standing, always marching. And yeah, this movement is absolutely essential. The marching and the fighting, it is necessary, particularly in a, in a world that is shaped by constant injustices and inequities. Right? So the working and the doing is essential. And they, they, they say, you know, we've got to, in light of all these things that, that ail us as a world, We've got to stay woke. And still, we can't stay awake all the time. <laughs> Trisha Hershey's manifesto, Rest is Resistance, published in October. It's worth getting a copy. Because Trisha, she's the founder of what has become known on social media as the NAP ministry. <laughs> And she's been dubbed the Nap Bishop. Uh. <laughs> you see, I appreciate Trisha's work uh, because it brings uh, to life in a fresh way some of the tenets that we've explored uh, in the past here. It elevates in, in a different way uh, what we've discussed in terms of Walter Brueggemann's that Sabbath is resistance, learning how to say no to the culture of right now. Right, that, 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 that Trisha, she helps, and I, I, Marcel, yes, it's a fantastic read. I'm going to invite us to, to read it uh, together, right, because it, it turns that, that, that what Max Weber has described as the Protestant work ethic and the spirit of capitalism, that, that this mentality that has been shaped by an ecclesial tradition, that somehow we earn our inheritance, that by our doing and our working, we, we win our salvation. 
Right, so, so capitalism, he argues, is actually like grounded in, the, in this, this, this sense of like work and trying to get God's attention to earn our way into heaven. But there's a turning that happens that the grace of God is freely given. Freely given. That God's love comes to us, meets us before we do anything. Before we do anything, God created us beloved in the image of God. So from the moment, the instant of our conception, we are loved. Right, that the grace of God then comes before, greets us, we're awakened to that love, then we're able to choose love. But the universe is already created in such a way that we don't have to do anything, we just need to be and rest assured and stand on the promise that we are, full stop, we are, we are loved. Tricia, the, the, the Nat Bishop, she writes this way, right? Rest is radical because it disrupts the lie that we are not doing enough. It shouts, no, that is a lie. I am enough. I am worthy now and always simply because I am here. The rest is resistance movement, she continues on. She says, is, is a connection and a path back to our true nature. That rest is radical because it disrupts the lie and it shouts that we are not a enough. It, it, it shouts that it's a lie and it's about this connection back to our true nature, to who we are created in God's image. So Jesus says to his friends, come and go with me to the wilderness and rest. Away from all of the hustle and the bustle, away from all of the noise, away from a society, a culture that is built on productivity, yes. capitalism that tries to measure our worth, yes. and then when right, we don't have, we've not earned enough, we've, right, we've not worked hard enough in order to get ahead, then we start internalizing this, this logic that, that our worth is built on our production. Right, so then we start beating up on ourselves and, and being hard on ourselves. This is why I, I choose this year to take a different approach to Lent so that we don't deny and beat up on ourselves, but we choose to rest. Assured. Because every good baker knows. Kay, you know this over on projection today. That every good baker knows that you have to allow Baked bread, right? You gotta let it just sit and cool. Yeah. Right? Allow the, the steam to escape. Otherwise, the bread is it's, it's mushy and, and right, it's damp and, and gummy. You, ha you have to wait for it to cool down, and, 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 and when you let it just rest, yeah. like the bread rises yeah. and it develops flavors and consistency throughout. When you just let it rest. Every good uh, barbecue pit master knows the same. <laughs> right? Right? It, 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 you can't cut the steak, the brisket, right after you take it off the grill. You gotta let it sit for, just gotta let it, and let those flavors just marinate. Every good musician knows Right? That, that, that if there is no rest in the music, 
is just a cacophony of sound that just beats at you. But you just, you gotta just pause. And allow the melody to wash over you. When somebody dies, we often say rest in peace. But I want to live a good life now. Can peace be our portion now? That we might rest in peace on this side of glory. Because that's the thing, right? right? If you work all the time, right, the literature is there, the studies are there, right? You work all the time, you die sooner. Right, right, right. As Black History Month comes to a close, I'm reminded. I'm rem right. We've we've read uh, uh, Lorraine Hansberry's *A Raisin in the Sun*. Right, Big Walter literally, because of an architecture of white supremacy and injustice and segregation, right, literally works himself to death. How many of us follow that pathway? Right, that, that we just work, <laughs> right? <laughs> I know that's right, Tanya. Talk, 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 right? Right, right. that the invitation that Lorraine, that the scripture, that, that the gospel is inviting us is to take a different, right, to, to break a generational curse. So Jesus says to his friends, come and go with me. To the wilderness, to the barrenness of winter, to strip off the excess. No need to accessorize. You're cute before you put on the cute outfit. You're made in the image of God before you put on the makeup. Jesus says to his friends, Come and go with me. Sit your down <laughs> and rest. Rest assured. So here's the practice for the week. Take 10 minutes every day. Here's the invitation. Take 10 minutes. I'm gonna take my 10 minutes at 12 noon each day. Join me. If you can't do it at noon, that's cool. Find a time that works for you in the day. If you forget, that's fine too, no worries. This journey. <laughs> Preach this sermon, Tanya, I love it. <laughs> yes, set a timer. Right? Set your phone, set a timer. Just take 10 minutes. If you forget it, no need to feel bad, no guilt. That's not what this creative journey is about. You're invited along this creative journey and it's not compulsory or forced. It's invitational. They say, take the time, because that's right. Sometimes you have to take it back. <laughs> the apostles came back to Jesus and reported all that they had done and taught. And Jesus said, come away by yourself to the wilderness, to the desert. And on this side, glory. 
rest assured, rest in peace, because you are enough. Thanks be to God. Amen. 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 We sang it a couple weeks ago. Come and go with Jesus. Come to Jesus. Just now. to Jesus. Assure it. But that's the invitation. If you are looking for a relationship with the one who invites us to just rest assured. If you're looking for a relationship with a church family that reminds you that you're enough and able and worthy, go to unionboston.org. Oh, we're going to look at that heart. Yeah, we did the super zoom in today. <laughs> Go to unionboston.org forward slash join. We're going to have a new member Sunday uh, coming up real soon. Uh, there's a few folks who are ready to make that commitment uh, to join us, and there's always room. There's always room. To Jesus, come to Jesus. 
If you agree with that prayer, somebody put your hands together. And keep clapping because it's time for the offering. We clap because we are thankful and grateful, and we know that God has uh, blessed us to be a blessing. One of the ways that we might bless others is to give a portion of what God has given unto us. So there's four ways that you can give. You can go to unionboston.org forward slash give or do the same on the app. You can text to give any dollar amount, 84321. You can send a check if you are at home, 45 Columbus Avenue, Boston, 02118. If you're here, there's an offering bin right at the, at the exit. You can just drop it now or later as you depart. Union, it is time for the offering.
Tell me where would I be? Oh, tell me where. Where would I be? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Spirit, Holy Spirit, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, let's go ahead and let's uh, spotlight Pastor Kyle. At the beginning of the service, we said that prayer changes things. Turn to your neighbor and say, prayer changes things. Yes. Somebody type in the chat, prayer changes things. Yes. Indeed, Pastor Kyle, it is good to see you. Yes. So, so what's going on down in Tejas? Go ahead, uh, you can talk. Unmute. All right. Can you hear me? Hold on. <laughs> yeah, now we can hear you. Go ahead. Everybody on. All right. What's going on in Tejas? Well, I'm down here for my, uh, well, my, one of my best friends got married last night, and uh, <laughs> which is great to be with family now. But on Tuesday, I've got my ordination interview, which is the final step in my ordination journey. Uh, so God willing, I... <laughs> We'll pass my interview on Tuesday with the North Texas Annual Conference. Um, this is a culmination of a very long uh, journey of discernment and vocational affirmation by many, many people, including uh, just all the wonderful people here at Union. Um, I'm so grateful for just getting to be on this journey with you all, uh, to be built up, edified by ministry with you all. I've learned so much. I've been transformed by each and every one of you, and uh, I I know that my mentor pastor tells me anytime I go into these interviews to remember the, the communion of saints that goes with me, and uh, you all will be with me in that room, and uh, I thank God for, for each and every one of you. Indeed, and so because prayer changes things, we invite uh, those of you who are in building just to uh, extend your arm to the screen. Those online as well do the same, knowing that prayer changes things, so we pray, oh God. Uh, you have already begun a amazing and extraordinary work in Pastor Kyle. Now bring it, as your scripture says, uh, to completion. As he prepares for his interviews for full membership and ordination this Tuesday, the communion of saints, his beloved family here at Union, his beloved family in Texas and all over, we are praying with him and for him, knowing that it is already done. Let your spirit fall afresh on him, anoint him, allow him to speak clearly and confidently and boldly of the love that rests in his heart. Allow him to rest assured that you have set him apart. You've prepared him. You've called him. Now let him bear witness to your love, to your grace. We pray these and more blessings as we claim the victory even in advance. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Let all God's people say amen. amen. Come on and put your hands together and bless God. So delighted, uh, and uh, yeah, so this is, so he's right now commissioned, which is effectively being an assistant pastor, sorry, an assistant uh, professor in the academy. So now this will give, uh, he'll be ordained and have full tenure uh, in the United Methodist Church. Uh, so we're excited about what God is doing in Pastor Kyle's life. Amen? Amen and amen. We are excited about what God is doing in the life of union and of community United Methodist Church. You should 
know that on this Tuesday, uh, March the 1st, the merger that both community and union uh, approved earlier this month, it, is a, it will go into effect March 1st. Uh, so the members of community who will welcome, and I see one on the screen right now, Patrick, uh, and there's others uh, that will officially become part of the union family, and we will uh, steward the properties and all these things as well. So let's give God a, a hand clap of praise for what is happening. And then finally, Creative Journeys, we're praying, we're practicing, we're gathering. Sign up, unionboston.org forward slash, forward slash Lent for further details. We're practicing rest this week. We're practicing rest this week as we pray daily, weekly practice that we talk about in the sermon, and then Wednesday gathering small groups. So it launches this Wednesday with Old West as we gather, sign up of, and get all the information for Bible study, a creative small group by Zoom on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. We're excited about what God is doing. We invite you to stand in body or in spirit. As we conclude this worship service and conclude a Black History Month, we began by singing Lift Every Voice and Sing. It's appropriate that we close with the same. Uh, we're going to be blessed with the video rendition because I just love it. Uh, so <laughs> allow, uh, allow them, let's, let's turn to the video, not the, um, um, do we have that video? Ready? Yeah, we, we got it. Um, for those of you, at 519, it's in the hymnal. We're going to allow the video just to get started, and then after uh, we get on the normal rhythm, then we can sing it all together. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. But if we don't have it, we, that's fine. Oh, just give us, uh, who knows lift every voice and sing by heart? Anybody? Yes. yes. <laughs> Indeed. Well, we're going to um, go ahead and sing that as our closing hymn. As God has been faithful, has blessed us, I'm stalling, if you didn't figure it out already. <laughs> but it's just too good uh, to miss. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Let's just sing it. We'll send it out. Lift every voice and sing. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our
So the God of our weary years and our silent tears has brought us this far on the way. And we're on our way. So as we travel this journey, this wilderness road, rest assured that you are enough. And now may the grace of God and the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the intimate friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Let all God's people say amen. amen. your neighbor go in love you can unmute the lines and let's see who's let's see who's there